Now that I'm pretty sure of what I'm doing with the gas tank and that I'm not going to move the seat around, I want to work on the area behind the seat a little bit. So I want to figure out either storage or potential for future storage like a rack. And I also want to do the rear lighting, uh, tail light, brake light, turn signals, possibly a tag bracket of some sort um, for my registration sticker. I looked around at top cases and mounting solutions for those, but all of those that are good quality are more money than I'd want to put into this project right now. I even considered trying to make a mount for the case that I already have for the T-Max, but then when I put it up here, it kind of looks like you're trying to tow a refrigerator uh, when you see the size of this compared to the rest of the bike. So I found a sheet of 8 inch by 12 inch quarter inch thick aluminum online for under $20 shipped, and to me this would be about the perfect size for a rear rack on this thing. Um, it's just a little more narrow than the seat. Got a few inches of overhang from the rear of the frame there, but that's fine because it will probably be taken up by taillight, turn signal, etc. Um, I don't want it to remain rectangular, so it's probably going to be a lot of fun trying to shape this. And also, I'm going to need slots in here and things like that for mounting things in the future. Um, so it'll probably take a lot of work to actually turn this into something I like, but at least the price was right if I'm willing to put the effort in. After looking around online for a bit, this is what I ended up choosing for my tail brake light assembly and for my turn signals. This is a generic Chinese made aftermarket LED tail light assembly for some Harley Davidson models. Um, I basically picked it up because it was $30 to $40 and it got a lot of good reviews. Also I know that Harleys, some of them shake quite a bit and I figured since it's still getting good reviews then maybe it'll actually be a halfway decent piece. Uh, because I've put a lot of taillight assemblies on scooters and had them sh vibrate themselves apart. Um, but the bad things about it are, first off, it's got quite an angle here. Um, you can see if this is flat, there's a lot of angle to the back plate. Second, it has a curvature to it, if you can see that, because it's meant to be mounted to a rear fender, so that's going to make it a little harder for me to mount. On the bright side, though, it does have integrated turn signals and it has a tag light. Now on this it's meant to be mounted as you see with a tag light facing upward um, but in my case I will probably have a tag bracket underneath of it if I can fit it so I can just flip it upside down and then I'll just uh, switch the left and right turn signal wiring so it won't have any negative effect. Kind of the same deal for the turn signals about thirty to forty dollars for the pair generic stuff although these are labeled MFC Pro. Um, they are Osram or Osram, O-S-R-A-M, uh, LED components, so they can be amber or red. So amber obviously for turning, and then they have a red element for uh, tail light or brake light. And I think I'm going to use these as a brake light. That way it really gets your attention when I hit the brakes. I've already picked up an LED flasher unit for this moped, but these actually did include the resistors that you may need if you're trying to use a stock flasher. What I'm hoping to do is to mount this right about here so that it will sit below a rack and so that this portion of it is roughly straight up and down. What I'd like to do is have a tube that's a pretty snug fit inside of this frame tube so I can slide that in there, have an angle on it so that I get my taillight at the proper angle, and then have a plate mounted to that tubing um, to mount my taillight to. I didn't have any luck finding tubing that would work for me with no modifications. I couldn't even find tubing that would work for me with modifications at any reasonable price um, because everything I could find by the time I cut the OD of it down to match roughly the inside diameter of this I would have pretty much no wall thickness left. So I ended up doing something I really was hoping not to do and I picked up a big one and three quarter inch um, piece of round rod here so I'm gonna have to cut that down um, machine the OD and then bore out do a lot of boring out to the center to get a reasonable piece of tubing out of it. There's my bar. I intended to cut that at a 14 to 15 degree angle. Looks like I actually cut it at about a 13 degree angle. If that's a problem, I will most likely deal with it later. Um, after I bore this out, there'll be a lot less material if I need to try and change the angle a little bit. But just to show you, if I were to mount the tail light without that angle, it's just a piece of plate here. And you can see this would be angled way up in the air. But now if I add this, roughly in place, 
then it straightens out the angle of the tail light a lot more. I didn't mention it, so just in case anyone was wondering, to make this angle, an easy way for me was to go online and look at a right trapezoid calculator, because basically, if you look at this from this side profile, that's what you're dealing with. You got right angles here, and then just one angle here that I was unsure of. Um, so what I did was I knew that I wanted this length to be two inches, and then I just played around with a calculator until I got a 15 degree angle here um, and found the bottom length here. So I ended up two inches up here and 2.535 inches on the bottom side and that gave me the angle that I was looking for. And the reason it's wrong is not because of that, it's because I didn't do a perfect job with the uh, cutoff. I went through first with drill bits up to one inch, and then on each end I bored until I was left with about 120 thousandths of an inch wall thickness. So that leaves me with a very thick section here near the center, and I figure that way I can drill into there and tap that area, and there's plenty of room for a uh, bolt to bite into. I've cut a piece of 16 gauge steel that roughly matches the shape of the tail light, but I want to do something about this curvature back here. I'd really like this plate to match up better with this tail light. So I looked around the garage and I found that the corner of this steel folding chair is actually pretty close to the curvature of the tail light. So I'm hoping that it's substantial enough that I can bend that 16 gauge steel around this turn. I got the holes drilled so I could mount the light to the plate and I used six millimeter hardware here. Um, it's intended for much smaller uh, standard hardware, but with cap screws or Allen keys, uh, the M6 will actually fit. There is a bit of a mismatch between the angle of the bolt and the angle of the plate though, so the nut doesn't sit very well against the plate. Luckily I anticipated that, so I already have tubing around to fix the problem. That's better. Unfortunately, I can't put these in place because I'm waiting on my welding helmet, but while this is secured to the light, I'm gonna go ahead and mark around here and trim this plate better. At this point, I know that I don't want this bracket, this bracket, this little piece, and the threads aren't very good in the nuts that are inside of here. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be able to get those out easily or not, but I'm gonna to try to remove all of that stuff.
since I was right here, I figured I might as well take a look at the floppy seat that I don't really like. And what I found was that they originally used a shoulder bolt, so it actually couldn't tighten down. Uh, no matter what you did, it would just stay floppy, and it actually looks like someone had tried to tighten it down or maybe just used the wrong kind of wrench, but they rounded this bolt off. So I decided that what I'd do is just use a regular bolt, and I cut a piece of tubing to use as a spacer in here. Um, then the seat bracket will go on like that and I should be able to tighten it up hopefully enough that it doesn't flop all around all the time. Yeah, that's much better. Just got to remember to use a lock nut when I put that back together. But at least it's not wobbling all over the place now. Now I'm going to try to make another mount for the rack somewhere up here, sort of similar to what they've got back here. I think I'm just going to take a piece of one inch square steel tubing, basically cut that in half since I don't have any channel. Um, that'll be a lot stronger than just having a flat bar going across there and get that ready for whenever I can weld again. I got the second support tack in place with 8mm nuts in each hole and then I also replaced the 8mm nuts in this existing support. And this way I can take some measurements so that I can start out the uh, aluminum piece for the rear rack. Well, it fits, but I need to make some spacers to fix this angle and also to keep it from riding on the little hump in the center back here. Spacing under here looks okay to me now. I guess the next thing is I'll need to shape this a little bit so it's not just a chunk of aluminum sitting up here. And I'll definitely need to add slots, holes, something like that so that I could strap something down. This is what I've came up with so far. And I think I'm going to want more detail than this when it's finished. But at least that's a good starting point. Things are going great before I even get started. So I'm going to try and use this jigsaw to make at least some of the cuts. And I've had this thing for 20 years or maybe more. I've hardly used it because I've never liked it but I think it serves this purpose pretty well. So I picked up these Universal Shank Fits All Jigsaw uh, metal cutting blades. This is how they come out of the package and my jigsaw will not grab onto this. So I ground the end flat and then ground a new recess and now it seems to work okay. But as far as Universal and Fits All Jigsaws, I can say at least it doesn't fit this one. I'm gonna start with a real small cut here on the corner since I'm not convinced that this is gonna go well for me. Obviously that was a fail. So what I did was I ground off the T-section like this one has and modified the end a little more. And I also found that the uh, springs and the lever were falling off of my jigsaw. So I'm not sure how much was the blade and how much was, was the jigsaw, but we're going to try it again. All right, I give up. I've got a couple of old blades that never did work that well, but these were actually bought when I bought the jigsaw, so maybe they'll stay in there.
Maybe you could see why I don't like this thing a whole lot as I was cutting that because I try to steer it and it seems like it just keeps going in the direction that it wants to go. So this was a model that has this little head here that pops up and you're supposed to be able to steer it this way. I leave it locked down. That's supposed to keep it going straight, but I try to steer it straight and it still wants to turn. So that's why I don't like it. I don't know if you're a jigsaw dude, feel free to tell me if uh, that's normal and I'm just bad at it or if it's about time that I get a better jigsaw. It's a whole lot better than just looking at a rectangle, but I still think it needs more open space. If nothing else, maybe slots along the sides to help me secure something if I wanted to strap it across that way. Here's my next bad idea, to cut out these four sections, and then if I can get that right, repeat it over here, and then still probably have to figure out something to balance out the bottom. You can disregard my question earlier about whether this was normal or not for a jigsaw because if you look down this line I fought that thing the whole way just trying to get it to go straight and it kind of wanted to do what it wanted to do and throughout the process of just these cuts it spit the blade out five different times and that's not the blade I modified that's one of the blades originally for it so I think if I ever do another project with a jigsaw it won't be this jigsaw. I've got the matching design drawn out on the opposite side and drilled to start, but this time I've got a new jigsaw. I just went ahead and picked this up. It was about 60 bucks, so cheap enough, and I'm hoping maybe it'll be a tool that I don't hate anymore. Um, so we'll see if it goes more smoothly this time. The new jigsaw felt a whole lot better than the old one. I didn't have to fight it just to go in a straight line. Now the cuts are still pretty terrible, but at least now I know that it's my fault and I'm just bad with a jigsaw. That's getting pretty close to what I want, but I still think it needs something back here for a little bit more open space. I'm not exactly sure if I want to cut out the triangular sections here or actually cut out the X. So I'm going to start with the side parts and then see what I think after that.
I'll probably put some countersink bolts in here later instead of these standard bolts just so to give me a nice flat surface to mount things to. Um, I just don't have the bolts here to do it right now. But other than that, the rack is finished. Now I can turn my attention back to the tail and brake light assembly. This may prove to be a mistake, but since I burned through the very top of it, I'm gonna see if I can patch that up real quick. And this is a piece of a copper head gasket. Um, I had it on my car at one point, and when I was done with it, I just chopped it up and made these little spatulas for welding. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to hold that behind there as a backing and get it filled in. Now I need to make a hole through this plate so that I can pass wires from the taillight into the frame. Even though I took great care to make sure this is smooth, I've still got a grommet that will go in there when I assemble it to make sure I don't chafe any wires. I'd also like to use this plate to mount the rear turn signals. So I made up a couple of steel tabs and I've got them all marked out so I just need to weld them on. Now I want to make it so that these wires aren't just hanging out and instead I can route them inside of the tube along with the tail and brake light wiring. I'm going to go ahead and cut the terminals off the ends of these turn signals because I don't need them and it just makes routing them through holes more difficult. I'm also going to cut the ends off for the tail light because I don't have a Harley so it's not going to plug in anywhere. Got a whole lot of wires coming out of the back now, but the problem is I don't know what they all do. So they do give me a little bit of guidance on the back of the tail brake light combo for what each function should be. I'm going to check those anyway. Uh, the turn signals don't tell you at all what the wires do, so I'm going to need to check those. So I've just got the old battery out of that moped here. Um, I've got it hooked up to a charger because it doesn't have very much power. It should be enough to get things to illuminate. And then I'm just going to write down what everything does so I know for later. Okay, or not, because it looks like I don't even have enough power in this old battery to get an LED light to illuminate, so I have to get another battery. The easiest option for me right now is just to move the whole operation over to the truck and use its battery. Now I know the functions of each wire, but I also want to find out if it's okay for me to put all the grounds together if it will still work, because sometimes when I've tried to wire tail brake light assembly together with the grounds of the turn signals, 
Um, it just won't work until I separate the ground from the turn signal. I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but it's definitely something that I've seen on more than one occasion. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie all the grounds together and then see if all the lights still work. That looks good. Now I also want to make sure that when I tie the turn signals or tail and brake light together um, in addition to the grounds that I still don't have a problem. And I think what I'm going to do with this is use the red section of the turn signals for an additional brake light just so there's a lot more stuff lighting up when I hit my brakes. So I'm going to tie all those together as well and test that. The good news about everything working together that way is that I should be able to consolidate all of these wires into a single 5-pin connector when it's time to put a harness together. Um, I can't do that just yet. I can't make this a finished assembly yet because I actually will have to paint this and have everything ready to go before I can route the wires through uh, because of the way it's set up. So the next thing that I need to handle is figuring out if I'm actually going to put a registration sticker holder on here as part of this assembly or if it's going to go somewhere else. This is a 4 inch by 4 inch piece of plexiglass that I keep around normally for checking combustion chamber volume but it just happens to be basically the same size as a registration sticker here in Maryland so I can use that uh, just to give me an idea of if I even want to pursue trying to find out how to mount a registration sticker back here. It looks like I get 2 to 2.5 inches of clearance between the plate and the tire with any sort of reasonable angle. I don't know how much they actually bother scooters and mopeds here. I do know that in Maryland they do give the, uh, usually it's the sport bike guys a hard time that try to put their tags at a really extreme angle. So I'd like to avoid that. I just don't want to have another reason to get pulled over. I'd like to get an idea of how much sag this bike has so I know roughly how much clearance I need to build in if I try to put a registration plate back here underneath of this tail light. And I don't really want to look for just sag, which is usually just the rider sitting on the bike. I'm actually curious about how much um, suspension travel we get here with me jumping up and down on it, bouncing up and down on the bike, like hitting bumps and such in the real world. And these are old shocks and I will have newer shocks that I believe will be stiffer on there. But I think this will give me just a good idea of roughly what I need and kind of maybe a worst case scenario. So what I've done, since I'm alone, um, usually you would have somebody measure this with you off the bike and then on the bike if you were doing a traditional sag setup. Um, but I have used a small clamp and clamped a tape measure up here to the luggage rack. And then I put a mark down here on this bolt. And it doesn't line up anywhere specifically. Um, it's not zeroed out or anything like that since it's just a hanging tape measure. But I'm hoping that if I get a camera shot of this from the side while I sit on the bike and jump around on the bike basically, um, that I'll be able to watch it later and see exactly what kind of sag I've got, how much this moves up and down. After checking the footage, it looks like there's about two inches of travel with me jumping up and down on the scooter to simulate a very, very large bump. So I think it might be pushing it a little bit. I won't have a whole lot of room left, but I'm still going to go ahead with the initial plan and try to make a plate that mounts below the uh, tail and brake light assembly there. And I've got a piece of 18 gauge steel here already marked out the pattern for my plate. Luckily this taillight housing has so much room on this end that I was able to weld the nuts for the registration sticker plate on the inside instead of on the outside. That keeps it nice and clean and makes it easier to mount. The 
taillight does come with a gasket that helps it seal around the edges, but I'm gonna have to trim it down a little bit to help it work around the nuts that I've welded onto here, as well as the grommet up here probably. bundled all the grounds together, the left turn signal, the right turn signal, and all the brake lights. I put all the connections into this six pin connector, so I've got one free. Um, and this is just the standard connector that most Chinese scooters use, so I had that around. I'll just have to modify the harness on the moped so that it accepts this. And once I've done that, I've got a whole plug and play assembly here. It goes on with two bolts and includes my turn signals, tail light, brake light, tag light, and registration sticker bracket. As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more, and hit the bell to receive notifications. Thanks again.